did not prepare himself to the best of his ability uh, here. Chris Ariola, this is practically a home game. He's from nearby Riverside, San Bernardino. Now he's on fight night in versus, on versus, and we'll see him right after this. We're back, San Jacinto, California. It's fight night on versus Nick Charles, Wally Matthews, ringside, and wherever you're watching, join in. It's gonna be fun, it promises to be. Log on to www.versus.com slash scorecard and score the fights with us tonight on Fight Night. Small ring, look at these heavyweights, they're taking it all up, Wally. Well, obviously, they're not gonna have to look for each <laughs> other, and you see uh, there are the two gentlemen right there, Ariola, 24 and 21 KO, so obviously he's a big puncher. And uh, Israel Garcia, 19 and one, the loss. Torres Sykes, and we see him right there, 38 years old, knows that this could well, turn everything around for him. Yeah, he turned pro at uh, 215 pounds. Areola last was 250 plus at, in 2005, and his trainer doesn't like the fact that he came in at 258. But Areola with a big show of support here at Saboba. He lives in the vicinity, but he's got to keep his mind focused on Israel Garcia, who is a prohibitive underdog. All righty, we'll remind you of the uh, tail of the tape. First of all, you see the uh, huge difference in age there, 11 years in favor of Areola. The height, pretty negligible. The weight, again, a big factor perhaps here, 258 and a half for Areola. He was 239 for his signature performance against Chaz Witherspoon a few months ago, and the reach just about the same. And there you see the unified rules, no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight, and neither fighter can be saved by the bell in any round. Our first night of the, of the first fight of the night here, fight night on versus. Let's meet both fighters now as we go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and welcome to the Saboba Casino here in San Jacinto, California. Well, fans, we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions in association with the Saboba Casino. At this time, we present a championship attraction about also made possible by Debella Entertainment, and it is sanctioned by the WBC President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor in Attendance Rudy Tellez. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, Marty Denkin, Raul Caiz Jr., and Lou Filippo. Introducing our third man in the ring, a referee in charge of this bout, we have Dr. Lou Moret. All right, fans, here we go. 10 rounds of boxing for the WBC Continental America's Heavyweight Championship. Introducing to you first, the challenger. He is on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and white trunks, hailing from New York City in New York. He weighed in at 246 pounds. His fine record stands at 19 wins, one loss, with 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the challenger, Israel King Kong Garcia. And his opponent across the ring on my left is the defending champion, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with silver trim, hailing from Riverside, California. He weighed in at 258 and one half pounds. He is undefeated through his campaign in the heavyweight ranks with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 21 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the defending WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, the undefeated Cristobal, the nightmare. Once again, a referee in charge, Dr. Lou Moret, now to give instructions, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled. Okay, gentlemen, I'm giving you instructions in the dressing room. Right here is fine. Below this is a little low, okay? Shake hands, you turn your corner and wait the bell. Hey, hold on tight for this one. Lou. Chris Ariola will be moving forward, as we said, testing Garcia's heart early. And Garcia said he knows He'll be coming. Garcia completely untested at this level. No wins over gatekeepers or trial horses. 
but he has sparred with some big names. This is a different story. He's in a small ring with the unbeaten Chris Ariola. I don't think either one of these guys are inclined to use a heck of a lot of the ring anyway. <laughs> Ariola goes to the body, sinks a left hand there right away. Garcia's got to get on that jab, Wally. You know, we uh, called his fights recently, and he gets into rumble situations. Yeah, it's, and it's never wise to fight the other guy's fight. I mean, let's face it, going, Ariola's wrestle, fight is a brawl. It's an inside back, fight. It's the fight you're seeing right now. And the way for Garcia to give himself a chance is just to try to take Ariola out of that he's, fight. He's got to get off the ropes. His corner does not want Garcia where he is now. Ariola just able to pick his shots right now. But Chris Ariola in the white starting extremely slow for him. Well, again, you know, we'll go back to the weight, and I'm sure we're gonna, we'll be harping on it the longer the fight goes. But, uh, you know, I asked him today, is it fair for fight fans to question your discipline? And he said, yeah, it is. He goes, I question it myself sometimes. Uh, yeah, he said he was up to 278. He said he was pushing barbells and pushing burritos in his mouth, is how he put it. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, really, there has to be said, something has to be said for the way you present yourself, even if you feel like you don't have to train to your best fitness to oh, be no a particular doubt. guy. How about the way you present yourself to the public? Well, bottom line, Henry Ramirez said to, in front of Chris Ariola, his best weight's 235, 240. Oh, oh nice double. There's three, four left hooks, and Garcia says, you didn't touch me. But he went to the body with the left, followed up. Oh, he touched left him to the right. head. He now Ariola banging a body. He's a combination punch, not a real single shot power guy, uh, Wally. No, nothing pretty. You know, he does nothing really flashy or impressive, except that he keeps coming. He's a heavy puncher, and he does punch in combinations. I like that he attacks from all angles when he's dead fit. We've seen him fit against Damian Wills. We've seen him against Chaz Witherspoon, his last fight, and here comes Garcia absorbing a lot of shots, so Ariola with tons of free shots. Garcia looks a little, he's gotta get into this fight one. Well, the thing is, nervous. Garcia has done nothing to get any respect from Ariola yet, and he's got it. I think he's a little unhinged, you know, this is the biggest fight of his life. Well, it's not like Ariola's doing anything he didn't expect. They had him pegged, and we talked to him today. They knew exactly what Ariola was going to do. And, you know, you know they're prepared for it. They just may not be physically prepared for it. Well, Wally, already, I, this is not the usual Chris Ariola. He fights, it, to me, at a much faster clip. But it's early. Oh, nice combination. Boy, Garcia's got a chin, I'll say that. He has been tested for beard here in the first. All right, here's the best punch of the first round for Chris Ariola. You see the left uppercut, and I'll tell you what, Garcia's got to do a better job of establishing distance in this round, Nick. Boy, that is Ariola's signature combination. He has really, really done well with that, Molly. Now, this is what Garcia needs to do, establish some distance with that jab, because if he allows Ariola to stay close like that, he's not going to be around very long. He's got to box him. Ariola would like to be inside. If he's got to be inside, he's got to be winning inside, and he has been all through that blistering first round when he opened up. Well, the other thing, you know, it would be wise for Garcia to try to take Chris Ariola as deep into this fight as he can, because we know there are questions about the conditioning of Ariola. You yeah. certainly don't want to let him be comfortable in there. Try to make him work a little bit outside his comfort zone and get him tired if you can. I question that only because Garcia's never been beyond six. I don't know how equipped he is to go deep. <laughs> Well, well, then, on further review, we better get in there and slug it out. <laughs> they gave him the Bronx cheer here, didn't they, in California? <laughs> the kid from Harlem, actually originally from Brooklyn. He's just getting over his morning of the Yankees defeat, <laughs> big Yankee fan. You can see right there, the numbers do not lie. Ariola just taking his time, and Wally, you're hitting on what you said. You know, he's there to be hit, Garcia. Why not? Yeah, There's right that up uppercut. Cut. Hook uppercut all night. It's there. And Garcia's not wrapping him up. What should he be doing? But by the way, <laughs> Garcia snuck his own right uppercut in there, and it did kind of slow down Ariola briefly. Let's see. I yeah. mean, you know. Good point. And let's watch for the hook from Garcia. That's his best punch. Left hook to the body. 
So, Wally, agree or disagree, should he be there? You want him to Absolutely establish distance? Absolutely not. I think yeah. I just said that. But you know what? Well, but if he hasn't got the legs there. to, to uh, well, he is scoring there, but you don't fight the other guy's fight. It's never a smart thing to do, especially when the other guy fights that fight better than you do. You see what I mean? Getting tagged a lot. That's good work by Ariola. Ariola with three shots. He's picking off there. Uh, Garcia, who's raising the ropes at his back. He's in the corner, not trying to fight his way out to the middle of the ring. He's really taking flush shots, though. Not only that, Ariola is leaning all of that 258 pounds on and making it very difficult for Garcia to get out of the corner. Garcia, 246, is a big boy himself. Stop holding, guys. Let him go. See, there's the hugging and holding a little bit you don't see from Ariola. Yeah, this is when not he's the fight. Yeah, you know, I agree with that, but this is not the fight Garcia should be fighting. This is like a monster trucks uh, exhibition. He's taken too many, too many clean hits. You gotta let his hands go inside. Uh, he doesn't have the combination speed that Ariola does. Who are you? I'm. All right, you're going to see Ariel scored heavily here at the end of the round. Some big shots, but he also got flipped with a short right from Garcia, who, for one thing, Nick, has taken his shots very, very well for yeah. some rounds. Yeah, and as the, as the rounds roll on, you're going to start to wonder. You know, you start to question. You know Garcia's got a, a great chin, maybe, but you question Ariel's power. Well, Garcia's never been knocked out, as we've said. You know, his one loss to Torres Sykes by decision. So he's durable. Great left hook by Ariel. Just what they want. They're guarding against. His corner told him, get your hands up, watch the uppercut, watch the left hand. There's too much to watch, Wally, when Ariola lets his hands go. But they also want Garcia to let his hands go. He's really got to get him working. He can't rely just on that hook. Well, you know, Nick, I'm a big proponent that fighters do what they can do in the ring. If he is not using that jab and establishing his distance because Ariola is not allowing him to. <laughs> Every fight I've done with him, he says he's going to do that, and then he gets into this. Right. this now he's backing off. He's, he's getting hurt. hurt. Guy. He's about to go down. Wow. Lou Moret saw it off. The ropes held up Garcia. It's kind of a quick Garcia, stop. Garcia, well, it was, but I guess he had been absorbing so many shots. And look at Garcia. He's not protesting. No, he's not. Yeah, he doesn't look happy about it. Wally, I think it was a question. This guy couldn't box his way out of trouble. Well, I think there's problems. no doubt that Ariola was going to wear him down, and he was wearing him down. But I do not think they're happy in the corner of uh, Garcia right now. I'll tell you where they are happy. Chris Ariola, because he didn't want a long night. You know, we talked about the weight. We talked about the... Well, we did. You know, the level of opposition is always the key to his performance and his condition. Yeah. And he was let down. He was thought he was looking past this guy. So for him to get him out in three rounds, I think was absolutely crucial. For yeah, him. but you know, you well, wonder the Riverside, what this teaches him. Me, you, you know, does it teach I mean, him, Nick, that here. you know there are certain guys I don't have to I'm train very hard for? Let's well, take a look at the end of the fight here. When you decide whether you think the stoppage was a little too quick. You see two good left hooks. Garcia starting to back up, and then on the ropes, he's going to get hit with another one right there. Probably on his way down. You know what? It's not a bad stop. It's no, his hands were down. He wasn't stoppage. punching back. You know, he did hit Ariola back there with a the right hand, but Ariola well, didn't Ariola, there's, it's not a secret that Ariola can be hit. I mean, you know, we talked to him today about what do you need to work on. He said, i got to learn to move my head. Huh? You know, there's no doubt about that. And he did run into a few shots. Well, look at look at Moret, look at Garcia's face. And you can really see the expression in his eyes. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Garcia's not going to come back to win this fight by a knockout. I mean, if you need your endings a little bit more definitive than that, that's fine. But I don't think it's a bad stoppage. Uh, that's exactly what Chris Ariola needed tonight, a stoppage inside three. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 11 seconds in round number three. A referee in charge, Dr. Lou Moret, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout, still undefeated, and still the WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, Cristobal, the Nightmare Arreola. Well, Chris Arreola, here's a guy who has made Powerful statements against prospects. 
Tonight, he beat a guy he had to get out early. Did it in dynamic fashion. We'll be back to talk with him after this. Chris Ariola takes out Israel Garcia, and look at Ariola. Free shot after free shot. Garcia standing in front doing nothing. There, he tags Ariola, but unable to dissuade him. Ariola getting off when he wants. The combination's flowing, and Garcia just walking in to a firefight, an ill-advised fatal one for him as he goes down in three. Chris Ariola takes care of business before the hometown, and he's with our Wally Matthews now. All righty, Nick. Well, we just saw it there. Now let's let's hear from the man who can uh, talk in combinations as well. Chris Ariola, were you happy with your performance tonight? Yeah, it was a decent performance. Uh, I give myself a maybe D plus, C minus on this performance. Well, you're a I tough grader. Yeah, I believe I could have done a little bit better. I probably could, should have ended earlier, but you know, just paced myself and I just made sure that I could find the right combination to open the lock. Well, what specifically do you think you did do well? I, I believe I could have closed a, a lot sooner. Maybe I could have thrown more combinations than I did today. If you guys could believe that but um I see much more openings my coach kept telling me you know Henry kept telling me you know what there's opening here there's an opening there I didn't capitalize till finally the final round all right now we've made an issue of uh your weight for this fight obviously you came in heavier was it important to you to get this thing done early because of that no well I felt you know Paul Williams came up higher so I was going to raise my weight too <laughs> <laughs> but honestly you know I, I knew I, I was, I was going to come in here in good boxing shape to go all 10 rounds but um as what you guys seen, I could have gone in the full 10 rounds at this pace. All right, we're going to take a look at the end of the fight here. You get to play commentator because I think you'll be pretty good at it. You can tell us. In fact, why don't you just call it? Well, I just see he kept dropping his hands. See, so he dropped his hand, right hand, just landed flush, came back with the right hook, the right hand. And it, it's just a matter of time. I just kept coming with a combination. I should have thrown uppercut somewhere in there, but I didn't. But I got him out of there eventually. Well, he did plenty of damage with your uppercut, but Garcia was not happy as he left the ring. He thought the stoppage was a little too soon. Were you surprised that it was stopped uh, at the moment it was? No, because you know what? Honestly, he was getting hit with punches every round, like first, second, even the last round. He kept getting hit with punches, and, you know, it was they, they had to save him. They had to save him, you know. That's the way I feel. All right, so you're supposed to get back into the ring with a, a higher echelon opponent, uh, perhaps in November. At what point do you want to really step it up and start fighting guys in the top ten? My next fight. As soon as possible, you know. After this fight, I'll probably just get hit back to the gym come Wednesday, Thursday, and just get back to about 240. That's a pretty good, pretty good way. What do you think? I was going to say, what do you mean head back to the gym? Head back to the gym, you know, just. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you just got to get back to the gym and just put down the burritos and the weights. But you're going you're gonna to train for the, you know, trade harder for the next one. Yeah, of course, you know. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm stay strictly to a boxing you know, regimen. All righty. Chris Ariola, a short work winner tonight over Israel Garcia. Back to Nick and ringside. Wally loves to eat.